Hello, and welcome to The Monster Painter. This week, we take a look at Spellcaster, the Frostgrave magazine, and figure out which issue is right for you. And stay tuned to the end of the episode for your chance to win some fabulous Monster Painter swag. This time, it's a t-shirt! How cool is that? Now, just in case you don't know what Frostgrave is, uh, apart from being my favorite game, it is a very popular tabletop agnostic skirmish game set in the frozen ruins of old Falstead, an ancient wizard city destroyed long ago by an arcane cataclysm. In uh, shorthand, it is a tabletop war game that occupies the space between Warhammer and Dungeons and & Dragons, and it's super fun. This brings us to the subject of this week's video. Spellcaster The Frostgrave Magazine. It is a series of seven magazines that have been published in a rather irregular schedule and they offer all sorts of wonderful extra content rules and scenarios. They give us all sorts of flavor and novel options for our games of uh, Frostgrave and for Frostgrave Ghost Archipelago. They are all available right now at Drive Through RPG. You can get them as PDFs instantaneously, or you can get a print-on-demand copy, which is going to take, you know, four to six weeks to uh, arrive in your hot little hands. And there are seven of these, and you might be wondering, which issue is right for me? Well, I'm here to answer that question. So, off the top, issue one is a slim 28 pages, and for some players it may be the absolute no questions asked must have issue, because it delivers an article that is probably the most asked for rules option in any fantasy game anywhere ever, which is rules for black powder firearms. The article opens up with a line that to me epitomizes the ethics of Frostgrave and the reason I love the game so much, which is, and I quote, Just to be clear, there are no firearms in the world of Frostgrave. With that unpleasantness out of the way, here are the rules for black powder firearms in your games of Frostgrave and Ghost Archipelago. I love it. Always uh, uh, do-it-yourself, rule of cool, it's about having fun ethic. And it's a great article, delivering a very satisfying set of rules for black powder weapons in your games of Frostgrave. The issue also includes some rules that will be close to the heart of many a wargamer. Rules for horses and mounted units. It's uh, also fleshed out with some rules on knightly orders, so you can field all those uh, equestrian and cavalry units in your warband and get some use out of all your models. Um, and that brings me to a issue that I really love about Frostgrave in general. In terms of metagaming and power gaming and just trying to ratchet the rules for every possible advantage, the most effective and efficient options are always the ones in the core rule books. All these uh, optional rules let you add flavor to your warbands, let you do interesting novel things, but you pay a premium for them. There's never going to be none of these rules give you a, a game-breaking advantage or really much of an advantage. It's about uh, adding fun and flavor, not seeking, seeking dominance through some quirky rule in some obscure tome. That's what's beautiful about Frostgrave and that's what's beautiful about these magazines. Now, this issue is rounded out with a classic solo mission for your captain and a nice little three scenario campaign to boot. So, this first issue may be the only one that you really need, but there are more. Now, if you're like me and absolutely love monsters, issue two and its 36 pages might be the one that you must have. And it might be the one you must have for one simple word, DRAGON. There is an article that offers rules on how to construct different types of dragons that range from very dangerous young ones right up to the super boss monster old ones. Monsters so dangerous they would require a 
group of high-level warbands working together to take on a high-stakes mission against the Dreadful Worm. And to seal the deal, we get just that. A cooperative scenario where a group of warbands faces the mighty uh, Grim Grimorlin, a powerful ancient dragon who is easily one of the most dangerous monsters in all of Frostgrave. Now, who doesn't want to take that on? The issue is also filled out with uh, rules on traps in Ghost Archipelago, a Frostgrave mech game, which is pretty fun, uh, but somewhat limited, and uh, yeah, a one-off Frostgrave scenario. So good stuff. Issue 3 doesn't offer any big-time marquee expansions like Guns or Dragons, but it is a personal favorite because we get rules and backgrounds for Rangifers. Now, for the most part, Frostgrave is quite miniature and fluff agnostic. This allows you to put together your, your warband and their backgrounds as you see fit. There are no rules for orcs or elves or dwarves or tabaxi or whatever. It's all avoided. A thug is a thug, regardless of whether that thug is a goblin or a warforged or whatever. It's one of the best parts of the game. Now, in this issue, we get a description of Frostgrave's only really unique playable species, the Rangifer, a kind of human-reindeer hybrid. We get some unique Rangifer soldier types and rules for the distinctive Rangifer spellcaster, the Rangifer Shaman. All of this is good stuff, and it is intended for a special series of Rangifer-themed solo adventures, which really kind of are precursors to uh, Rangers of Shadow Deep in many ways. The scenarios are fun and solid, and I really enjoyed them. And if Mr. McCullough is out there watching, I would just like to ask for some more rules for Rangifer Warbands and uh, Rangifer Shamans in conventional games of Frostgrave. That would be awesome. I would really like that. The issue is rounded out with uh, rules for underworld connections for the sleazier wizards out there. We get a taste of some Frostgrave fiction and a preview of Rangers of Shadow Deep. But there's also a very fun article about an auction mechanic that can add some real powerful magic items into your uh, Frostgrave campaigns. Finally, if you're a fan of the red-haired stepchild of the Grave games, Ghost Archipelago, this issue is a must-have. You get eight ulterior motive cards just for Ghost Archipelago, uh, which has a big potential to really spice up your games and campaigns uh, in that southern southern ocean. Issue 4 offers us up some great stuff, including a fun solo scenario for a Ring of Fur Warband and some more Ghost Archipelago ulterior motive cards. This is kind of a continuation of the content from Issue 3. We also get a high-level scenario where a group of warbands faces the very tough King of the Frost Giants. <laughs> that is super fun stuff. All this is great, but the killer app in this issue for many players are going to be the rules for critical successes and failures in spellcasting. Now, these rules are not for me. I find the game swingy and punishing enough, but some people will absolutely love this extra layer of danger and reward for your wizards. Um, it also includes a great article about legendary soldiers. Uh, they are unique, extra tough, extra expensive soldiers you can hire into your warband, giving them a, more of a D&D party feel, and um, giving them some more punch to hit your enemies with. Issue 5 is probably a must-have for those Ghost Archipelago players out there. We get rules for high-level heritors for leg and legendary soldiers in Ghost Archipelago, as well as some more of those wonderful ulterior motive cards that really can spice up a game. And let's face it, at this point, Osprey isn't going to be publishing any more Ghost Archipelago uh, expansions, and really the only place that's keeping the game alive are the pages of Spellcaster, and I think it's a great sign of respect that Mr. McClue has for his players and fans that he keeps this game going and publishing new material for it. Now we also get some stuff for the old city of Felstead, including an article on monster hunting, 
which is uh, details all the possible goodies that could be harvested from monsters defeated in the course of a regular Frostgrave game. Most of the stuff gives a bonus to casting certain spells, and it's a lot of fun. There's also a solo scenario with a, a dragon and a new legendary soldier. And there is a six to eight player scenario for those occasions where the players are plentiful. I've never done it, but it looks super fun. And finally, there's yet another scenario, a regular scenario set in the breeding pits, and it's good stuff too. On to the super fat, double size, 68 page issue six, an extravaganza of Frostgrave fun. We get a four scenario campaign that is an exciting struggle against the dreaded Slime Lord. It looks like a total blast. I for one am really looking forward to playing this one. It looks fantastic. But there's more. We also get a four scenario campaign that was part of the Frostgrave Immersion Tour that happened before the days of the plague. Uh, there are fun, interesting missions, and each scenario includes a hobby challenge for the players, something to make that contributes to each of the scenarios. I think that's super fun. We also get another fun standalone scenario uh, called Standing in the Eye, which was previously previously available on McClellan's blog, The Renaissance Troll. Not enough? Well, we get a Grave-style solo game called Warriors of Athena, set in the world of classical Greek mythology, and it includes no less than five scenarios. And I love it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but you want more? Well, there's a sweet little article about using giant tortoises as pack animals in Ghost Archipelago. Still not enough? Well, this giant issue offers a real coup de grace. An article on eye demons, which are a Frostgrave knockoff of Beholders and appropriately a deadly badass monster. And uh, to round that out, we get a scenario in which we have to battle such a hideous monster. It's a sweet, sweet issue. And at last, we come to the latest issue, number seven of Spellcaster. If you're a Ghost Archipelago player, you're gonna like this one. It has a three scenario solo campaign and some more ulterior motive cards. Great stuff for Ghost Archipelago for sure. There is also a super fun three part scenario uh, where you hunt a very dangerous dragon. Awesome, awesome stuff. For me personally, the must have article in this issue is the Maze of Malachor Outtakes. It includes a scenario dropped from the original campaign, as well as weird effect cards, which are meant to uh, balance out uh, players who are falling behind in this long campaign. I mean, Maze of Malachor is 12 games long, and somebody's going to start taking hits and falling behind. And this will help balance the field. Now, right now, I am personally involved in a Maze of Malachor campaign at the local game shop, The Board and Sword, and so this article is just the right thing I need right now, so that is awesome. That being said, the thing in this issue that is going to be the most exciting to most players is a article updating the rules for spellcasting critical successes and failures, updating it into the second edition. Some people love this stuff. It's not, it's not for me. Again, I, I think it's the game is punishing and swingy enough, but some people eat this up, and this update will make it harmonize with all the new spells and all the new rules for spell casting in the second edition. And it's going to be a must have for some. So, after all that, what is the must have issue of Spellcaster? Well, the first runner-up is definitely issue one with the black powder firearms. It's a got, you gotta have that, it's so much fun. But then the second runner-up, definitely dragons. I don't call myself the monster painter because I don't love monsters and I love dragons. But the one that I would say is a must have is definitely issue number six with not, not one, but two, four scenario campaigns, rules about 
giant tortoises, rules about dreadful eye demons, you know, wink wink, beholders, and a wonderful solo game set in the classical world of ancient Greece. Beautiful stuff and a must have. It's been a little while since uh, they, Mr. McClullough has given us a spellcaster, so hopefully we'll be getting some more soon as I really, really enjoy this material. I think it's super fun. Wow, you made it through that great big long book report. You must really want this t-shirt. It's a men's large and the first of its kind and some genuine monster painter swag. To win it, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below. And then in one month, I am going to draw a name from all from the hat of all the commenters over the next month. Two more episodes after this will qualify for the contest. And the winner will be sent this wonderful men's large monster painter t-shirt. Who doesn't want one of those? All right. On to the monster fight. This week it's a hideous bizarre chicken monster versus a hideous zombie giant. Who will win? Mm, looks like a tough match, but we've got our victor. It's the giant zombie. Congratulations, giant zombie. There'll be a great big plate of brains for you after the show. Next week on The Monster Painter, it's monster fights and more monster fights and some more monster fights and it's going to be nothing but monster fights. All these monster fights. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell. Painter.